Hello everybody and welcome back to the JBit2 and welcome to my first ever mega review. Now I can hear you asking, what is a mega review? Let me explain. A mega review, as I call it, is a massive video made up of all the reviews of a season of Ninjago that I've made. This video will consist of episodes 1 through 4 reviews of the island, final thoughts and the ranking of the season, so you get to know my full raw thoughts on the season, all in one place. It's been a while since I reviewed the island, so I do sound very boring. But I'm doing this because I'm very excited for this idea, and I want to do it with the C-Bound reviews once they finished as well. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the mega review of the island. Enjoy! So we start with a cold open with Wu, Misako and Clutch and his interns scouting out the island, when they are interrupted by the discovery of the totem pole golems, which blast them with lightning which leads into the title card. We then see Lloyd and Pixel monitoring the surveillance around Ninjago, at the monastery, where we find out that Fuji Dove was arrested by Ronin, who was hired by the police, which is interesting. And that's not the first time that's happened, as it's obviously happened in Season 6, but they kind of hinted it in a way which is like teasing something for the future, so maybe there's going to be some corrupt police storyline coming in the future. The manager of the Explorers Club then shows up, announcing Misako's license has been suspended, as she's reported missing. Lloyd, obviously being worried about his mother, asks where she went, to which he explains she was going to explore the Storm Belt, with Wu and Clutch Powers in search of the Uncharted Island. Pixel panics and explains to the ninja that the Storm Belt is a place off the Ninjago Island infested by storms, where no one or no thing ever comes back except for one man, Timothy Baddison, or as we know him, Twitchy Tim. The ninja go to recruit Twitchy to join them on the journey, which leads to a fun introduction scene showing Tim and his personality, which is quite charming. And he is understandably afraid to return to the island, but after some persuasion and some memory loss, he joins. This is also the point where the suits show up for the first time in the season, which is odd. They kind of show up midway through the episode. Then we get a little transition sequence showing us from them getting from there to the storm, and while they're on the Destiny's Bounty we get a mini flashback sequence to Twitchy Tim, showing us a bit of his backstory. But hopefully we see more of this though, as there wasn't really much story there, it was just him talking and then some little shot of a balloon. So hopefully this story develops and we get to learn stuff like the 12 lightning strikes, or how their lightning is affecting him. However, they have left it open to explain in the future further, so hopefully the show goes in that direction. The ninja then arrive at the storm belt, which is too much for the Destiny's bounty to handle, so they drop in using the catamarans, which look cool. This leads into the fun action sequence with the ninja avoiding the rocks and lightning on their way to the island. We find out that the rocks are attracting the lightning, so I assume this is a defence mechanism of the island, or maybe it's a reason why the island is always covered in a storm belt. After that intense scene, we get a good look at the island, and it looks amazing. It's the same shot from the trailer, and as I always said, that would make a great background and the statement still stands. So can I say this shot of the original four is amazing, it's so nice to see the original four just back together again. Once they arrive on the island, Pixel deploys the jungle choppers for the ninja, and then they set out and find Misako's, em camp Misako's camp empty. Twitchy then panics, describing the monsters on the island, which look like the statues referring to the golems. The ninja decide that there's no time to waste, so they set off further into the island, and the episode ends on the help sign that Misako left in the sand. And so let's get into the good and the bad. There was a lot of good in this episode. Story-wise, I like the setup of the season with Lloyd's mum and Master Wu going missing and the ninja going on a rescue mission. I also like seeing at the beginning of the seasons when the ninja are outside of what happens in the season, so like Lloyd and Pixel just doing surveillance. It was nice to see. I'm also enjoying Twitchy Tim's character. He's amusing and probably my favourite side character in, in the recent seasons. But we shall see the charm wears off as we go into the season. Also, the little glimpse of the island we saw was great and the scenery looked amazing. Speaking of, the animation in this episode is am honestly amazing. It looks so good, and I can't wait for the animation style to evolve and evolve and evolve, and maybe it will even rival the original Will film animation style. Now going on to the bad, which is not that much of. This is going to be a problem with the whole season, but that's the runtime. I haven't enjoyed the 11 minute episode of the past two years, but I've gotten more used to it, but we've been getting more content from it, from like 16 to 30 episodes instead of 10 per season. However, this season's only 4 episodes long and them being 10 minutes long, it just feels like such little time to develop the story. So while I enjoyed th this episode, I just feel like it was a little too short, but that's just because of the time frame. Another thing is that the suits just come out of nowhere. Ninjago has gotten better at explaining where the suits came from. From the top of my head, Prime Empire was explained because they were in the game. However, these just feel like they were just placed there for the Lego sets or something. The suits look great, but I wish they had more meaning, like I was expecting them to get them from the island, as I theorised in a previous video. 
So not liking Clutch Powers too much. I think he's just a bit too much. I feel like I might get used to his character, but we shall see by the end of the season. But I'm not really liking him too far, and we're going to get more of him later on. So I'm just kind of hoping that his character kind of changes, but we shall see. And finally, this is just funny, but I couldn't unsee it. But Kai practically has the exact same face in every single shot throughout this episode. And I just find it amusing. I cannot unsee it. This face, which is hopefully on the screen right now, <laughs> is just, he always has that face. And I'm sorry if I've ruined that for you now. So overall, I think this was a very solid opening to the season. It sets up the motive and the location, and it's made me more excited for the season. I like Twitchy Tim's character, and I can't wait for him to progress. Hopefully he doesn't degress. And I'm liking the ninjas so far. They've all got equal runtime, and this is kind of like the setup episode, so I understand. But there's only four episodes, so hopefully they don't waste their time. So overall, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. And for the ranking, which by the way doesn't factor in the score, it's just how I feel about the episodes, it doesn't have a place right now, as it's the first episode. So this episode kicks off with the intro to the season. Now I've already made a video discussing my thoughts on this intro, so I won't repeat myself here. However, I will say I do like it. Check out my video to see my full thoughts. We then cut to the ninja riding through the jungle on the choppers, when Lloyd sees an animal following them. They stop to question it, but Jay points out that the jungle is full of animals. Cole then interjects, asking anyone if they have any food. Twitchy Tim then tells them that everything on the island is poisoned, including the berries that Cole is eating. But I feel like that's just an exaggeration, unless they're planning to go through the whole Cole being poisoned plot, which I doubt. We then see that a creature is watching them from the ridge. They ditch the bikes to venture further into the jungle, when they hear a noise that they've mistaken for Cole's stomach. Twitchy then presumes survival position, when the dragon reveals itself to the ninja. But as it turns out, it's friendly, and it quickly forms an attachment to Nia. Then Jay quickly suggests the name Zippy based off the dragon's ability to move quickly. Lloyd takes charge of his situation, trying to focus on the task at hand, being to find his mother and Master Wu, and the clutch powers, but he keeps seeming to forget that, which is interesting. Maybe there's more to it than just a simple gag. Nia then uses her abilities to send the coconut far away to keep Zippy distracted as they venture further into the jungle. However, this is short-lived when Zippy shows up again and steals Cole's cocomelon. They come to the end of the trail when they find inactive golems, Nia then pokes one with a stick, claiming it's just a statue, when it comes to life and the other golems reveal themselves. She leads into a big action scene with the ninja against them. We find out that the golems can harness their elemental power and project them back, which is fun to watch. Like this battle is it shows the golems are a genuine threat to the ninja. The golems then channel the purple lightning from the storm and blast out the ninja. The ninja have to ultimately run away, as this is a fight they cannot win. Lloyd and Twitchy then get split up from the other ninja, as they run separate directions. After crossing a not-so-safe bridge, the ninja are captured by the keepers of the amulet. Meanwhile, Lloyd and Twitchy find a cave to lay low in as the golems search for them. The captured ninja then arrive on catamarangs at the keeper's village, which looks very interesting. It looks like the place has been run by the purple lightning, maybe possibly being channeled by the storm amulet, I presume. Chief Mardus then accuses the ninja of attempting to steal the amulet they vowed to protect. He claims that loads of people have tried and failed to do so. He then explains that the amulet is ripped out of the head of an ancient creature that lived before time had a name, Wojira, not Rahira as I've been calling it, I'm sorry for that. Chief Mamadis tells the ninja that they are prisoners for life, now that they know too much about the amulet. Then the episode ends with a zooming out shot of the Keeper's Village. That's the plot of the episode, so let's get into the good. I really liked the golems more than I expected. They are shown to be intimidating and a true threat to the ninja with their brute force and ability to absorb and fire back elemental energy. I thought they would just be an obstacle for the ninja to overcome, but they're more than that. They were my favourite part of the episode. I also thought Zippy was cute, and I'm sure they'll show up again. I also like the little glimpse of the keepers we got, and Chief Mamada sounds amazing, I really like his voice. And now onto my least favourites. I thought the episode's name doesn't really fit, as we don't really see much of the keepers themselves, to the final two minutes. This episode seems to be more focused on the golems, also, Zippy kind of came and went, but I understand why they had to introduce him here so he can go save the ninja next episode or something, or wherever he appears, because he disappeared in this episode. But apart from that, but apart from their small gripes, I thought this was a decent episode. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. The golems were a pleasant surprise, and the world building was on point with the village, the bridge scene, and Zippy's introduction. I thought the pacing was better than the first episode, as they were already on the island. Yeah, apart from my small problems, the name and structure choices, I thought this episode was great and I'd give it a 9 out of 10. My ranking, it obviously goes above Uncharted. Let's see if the next two episodes, releasing on March 20th, will beat it. This episode kicks off where we left the ninja last, 
surrounded by the keepers of the amulet at their village, being sentenced to prison for life on suspicion of wanting to steal the storm amulet. Jay interjects attempting to defuse the situation, but it ends up becoming the gift the keepers of the amulet will use to sacrifice to Wujira. The other ninja gets sent to prison where they find Master Wu and Misako locked up with clutch powers and his interns. Kai alludes to the fact that Lloyd is probably out there right now thinking of a plan to save them, which in fact he is, as he's speaking. Lloyd applies camo to his face and asks Twitchy Tim to help. Twitchy declines as he has a fear of the island, so Lloyd gives Twitchy some words of encouragement, which will pay off later on in the next episode. I really like this scene with Twitchy, as he's definitely one of my favourite side characters so far. Lloyd sets off to save the ninja. Then we cut to Jay locked up in a room where he's greeted by a two-headed figure who gives him fruit. I liked how Jay was tempted by the fruit but ultimately reject them, rejected them in favour of finding out what happened to his friends. I was just expecting it to be one of those scenes where he like scoffs the fruit. You know, that type of stereotype. However, Jay mistakes them calling him the gift for making him their king. We then cut to shots of Lloyd making his way through a lightning infested jungle which had some really nice imagery. Lloyd arrives at the village and finds Zippy who followed him there. Lloyd uses Zippy's love for chasing coconuts to attack the keepers and make his way through the village, which leads to a very hilarious scene, as Zippy's movement is fun to watch. Lloyd frees the ninja, and they set off to find Jay, however Clutch Powers and his interns separate to go steal the amulet, which leads to them being captured again and strung up on posts at the beach, being forced to watch Jay sacrifice to Rajira. There's a cute exchange where Kai asks who would want Jay, which Nia responds with, um, me, which I liked. And Chief Mamadis explains their tasks of protecting the storm amulet given to them by the first Binjitsu master, which shocks Wu. They explain further that Wujira has reawakened and they must sacrifice Jay to appease it. And the episode ends with Wujira appearing and the camera closing in on Jay. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get on to my favourite parts. I enjoy a lot of this episode. I really enjoyed the scenes with Twitchy's character showing through. And the scenes of Lloyd traversing the jungle looked really good. The action is definitely on point this season. The story wasn't as complex, but at the same time it didn't need to be. All it needed to do was set up Jay being sacrificed to Wujira, which it did effectively. However, that leads into one of my least favourite parts of the episode, being that I feel like the sacrifice should have happened in this episode, as I w felt like it would have fit the story better, and also it would have gave more time for the finale to really flesh out the ending, which we'll get more into next episode. Also, Clutch is annoying as always, but I guess that's just his character at this point, so I won't hold it against the episode. So overall, I really enjoyed this episode, as it gave us a lot of good things, and it set up for the finale quite well. However, there are downsides, like some things like the, go the stone golems not even appearing again, which were my favourite parts of the last episode. And then the plot just being simply the ninja get captured, the ninja escape, the ninja get captured again, which isn't very fulfilling. But like I said, the episode did what it wanted to do on the tin, the gift of Jay. Overall, I gave this episode a 7 out of 10. I feel like it was a very average episode, but it had some good moments, but sadly some bad moments. And for my overall ranking, uh, it goes at the bottom of the list. Not because it's not a good episode, because it's just not as good as the others in my opinion. The episode begins where we last left the ninja, with Jay being sacrificed to Wujira. Kai manages to escape the ropes and free the ninja. The keeper spot this and it leads into a really nice fight sequence. This is something I'll talk more about in the full review of the season. But the animation in this season is beautiful, and this fight scene and the cinematography in the episode best demonstrates it. Anyway, what I like about this scene is that the ninja are focused on getting Jay back, which shows the Keeper is the true intentions of the ninja. I love the determination with Nia leading the charge. The ninja catches up to Jay using Zane's ice powers. Lloyd jumps onto the raft to attempt to untie Jay, but is knocked off by Rajira's fireball. Jay is swiftly captured by Rajira and dragged into the mist. As the ninja panic, Lloyd washes up on a wooden tooth and starts to realise what is really going on. Lloyd and the ninja wash up ashore and confront Chief Momadis and the Keepers and tell them that Wajira isn't real, showing them the wooden tooth as proof. The Keepers explain that for thousands of centuries they have been entrusted in protecting the amulet, entrusted by the first Spinjitsu master himself. As if the amulet got into Wajira's hands, again the seas would rise and devour the land. One day Wajira appeared, Chief Momadis questioned it, but a mysterious figure suggested offering gold and riches to appease her. They sacrificed everything they had until they had nothing left, so they had to sacrifice Jay. It's cool seeing their backstory, and just like it was rumoured, this year has definitely expanded the lore. The ninja demand that the keepers help get Jay back now that they know it's all an act. Lloyd asks them to draw a map of the island to find any places you could hide something really big. Very on the nose, guys. <laughs> 
We then cut to the criminals who operated the fake Wajira returning to their base. Once they arrive, Jay beats them up and makes his way through the base until the he's overrun. But then, coincidentally, the ninjas show up to save him and explain they managed to find the cave that they were hiding in because it's a big cave, <laughs> which I found hilarious. While the ninja are fighting, Lloyd walks him through who the, he thinks is behind it when Ronan appears. Ronan then explains that he took advantage of the criminals he, he was hired to capture, so he hired them to steal the riches of the keepers, using a fake Wajira, as he knew it'd scare them. As Ronan makes his escape on the fake Wajira, Twitchy appears racing towards him on a catamaran. Using the lightning that's running through him and the catamaran, he blows up Ronan's boat in the docks. After Twitchy is saved and the criminal will surrender, they capture Ronan and lock him up. Chief Mamadis offers his apologies for the events of the season, and they forgive him when they realise that the amulet is missing, which leads to a final gag of Clutch trying to run away with the amulet, however he is swiftly caught. The episode ends abruptly on Lloyd sitting on a pier wondering if the real Wajira is out there, and the episode ends on an underwater shot of Wajira resting with a amulet in their head, setting up season 15. So that's the summary of the event, so let's get into what I liked. Well like I mentioned, I liked how the ninja were determined to save Jay at the beginning, and them ultimately failing was cool for a few seconds before it was revealed it was fake all along. One thing I haven't pointed out all season is the music, which is especially good in the last two episodes. Some new tracks and returning tracks sound really good, and um, I like the, the Keeper's backstory. It makes sense, and shows that they were desperate to fulfil the promise the first Minjitsu Master gave them, which is good motivation and justifies their motives in my opinion. However, that's where the positives end for me, sadly. Let's move on to my least favourite parts. So firstly let's move on to something that everyone's been saying about the whole season, but I found especially, especially notable in this episode, and that's the pacing. It was just not great in this episode. The pacing was all over the place. It tried to rush through all these plot points so quickly and wrap up the season. The Rajira reveal was quick and unsatisfying. Ronan's appearance ended as soon as it started, and he felt out of place. Him being a villain could have worked, but they executed it so poorly, in my opinion. Like I said, it was rushed and it really could have been better. I believe this season could have benefited from at least one more episode. Just one more episode could have made the finale so much better, as I don't think it had enough time to tackle all these topics in just 11 minutes. And it just led to the ending scene of Lloyd sitting on the pier feeling like it was just tacked on. So overall I was kind of disappointed in this episode. I knew it wouldn't be great going in because of the previous episodes setting up so much, and I didn't think they could resolve it in 11 minutes. I'd be interested to see how it all adds up in the 45 minute special it was airing as in other countries wonder if it's possible sometime down the road if we could get an extended version of this season, say 55 minutes long, just to flesh out all the kinks that we had with some of their pacing issues. Think of it like a Snyder Cut situation. When I review the full season I'll treat it as the special, as I feel like that's what the creators intended it as. For this individual episode I felt it was rushed and desperately tried to tie up every single loose end and set up the next season, all in one. Definitely far from the worst Ninjago episode I've ever seen, but it's definitely far from the best. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10, straight down the middle, I think that's fair enough. And as for the ranking, well it has to go at the bottom, and that completes the ranking for the season. I'll make a separate video discussing my ranking, so stay tuned for it. I'm going to be bringing you my final thoughts on Ninjago the Island, or Ninjago Season 14 if you will. Still a bit confused about what to call it, but that's a subject for a whole other video another day. But this video, we're going to be talking about my final thoughts of Ninjago the Island. That is what I'll call it. I have made individual reviews on every single episode in this season, which I'll leave linked in the description, but you can also find it in a playlist on my channel. So if you want more in-depth reviews of the episodes which I'll be touching upon in this video, you can go watch them there. However, I should mention, I reviewed these episodes as they released in my country, however in other countries they released these episodes as one big special. And to me, as four episodes, the pacing felt a bit off, especially near the end. So for my overall thoughts video, I decided I was going to watch all these edited together as one big special, as I feel like that's what the creators initially intended it to be. But I have to say, even as a fully edited special, it still didn't quite fix some of the pacing issues that I had with the original 4 episode run. The island starts off quite good with the introduction leading up to the arrival on the island, and some of the scenes on the island after that do pace themselves quite well. But it's just near the final 20 to 10 minutes where obviously the writers and the creators of the show were struggling to try and wrap up the story in the short amount of time. I feel just extending it by even just an extra 10 minutes could have done so much for fixing the island's main issues. I'll talk about the main issues I have with the island first, as to be honest I did quite like the island, as I thought the island was a nice little adventure in the Ninjago universe, 
and it, I want to end the video on a bit of a positive note. So yeah, let's talk about my main issues, and I should clarify, this is my main issues. So if you disagree with me, then that's great. I'd love to hear your opinions on the island in the comments down below, and I do try to reply, so please let me know. Anyway, as you've probably figured out, my main issue with the island was the pacing, as I feel like they try to rush through too much of what I was interested in. For example, the main draws to the season for me was seeing a ninja like Jay in peril being sacrificed to a god. It's such an interesting premise which I feel like was just wasted. Like imagine if the season was longer and we saw the ninja having to go on an adventure to try and save Jay across the island and stop in this case Wajira from taking over. Which I think we'll see more of next season to be fair. But that's the type of premise I was expecting from this season. But instead it was just a cop out with Wajira being a fake. And Jay was in no real danger whatsoever. It was just very it was just a very unsatisfying ending, and I hope that season fifteen will make this ending a lot more satisfying once that releases, as the seasons are meant to be heavily connected, as hinted by the tease at the end of this season with Wajiru at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> I said season a lot there. Oh my god! Another issue I had with the island is the fact that it doesn't really involve the island itself. For a season called The Island, I expected the island itself to be more explored, or than it was at least. I mean, look at the wide shot showing the island that we first see. It looks beautiful, and I couldn't wait for the ninja to explore it all, from the mountain peaks to the rich jungles. But it turns out they only just touched on them, and we didn't even see half of it. I mean, there's even a volcano in this image, but it's not even mentioned once in the island. If I was making the season or special, if you will, I would allow the ninja to explore the island a lot more, and see all the stuff, otherwise I don't believe you should put an emphasis on the island name otherwise. I'd call the season Ninjago Keepers of the Amulet, as I feel like that name best fits it more than Ninjago the Island. And my final complaint about this season is that it just ditches characters. I was genuinely interested in the golems or totem poles. Those were probably my favourite parts of the season, and they only showed up briefly in episode 1 and only showed up in episode 2. Then they just disappeared, and I doubt we'll ever see them again. Which sucks. Another example is Twitchy, who just got sidelined only to make a brief re-entry for less than a minute in the final episode. I feel like the island just seemed very rushed and the ending just shows that. Normally we see the ninja going to go on the next adventure and the side characters getting an ending closing off their story. However this season it was just a quick scene of Lloyd looking into the sunset, setting up the next season. We don't know what happens to Twitchy and we don't see what happens to Ronan apart from prison obviously. But I guess it's not necessary, however, I really did like the stone golems in Twitchy's character, and I know we won't ever get to see them again, as that's the case with Ninjago side characters of, as of recently at least. And with that I come to the end of all my negativity with this season, as to be honest I didn't think it was that bad. It was just those specific things and the ending I didn't like that much. Everything else I really enjoyed. Like the first two episodes in my opinion are great, like really good Ninjago. Because it's the ninja being together, new side character, new adventure, new world and everything. It just felt like good Ninjago after how long it's been since the last one. It was nice to see that return to form with the ninja suits and everything. It wasn't no video game, wasn't no underground dungeon, it was them exploring Ninjago. Don't get me wrong, I liked the video game and I loved Masters of the Mountain. Or Master of the Mountain, sorry, I keep saying Masters. I was excited for this season as it looked like it was a true return to form before we get the crazy underwater adventure next season that we were going to have a nice ninja adventure in a jungle. And it's kind of what we got, but just not to the extent that I was expecting it to be. But like I said, the first two episodes were great in my opinion, it only loses me in the second half. The ninja were great and I suppose this season is meant to be focused around Lloyd, but it doesn't really feel like that, but I think that works out for the best, as I don't think this would work as a full Lloyd story. Lloyd takes command of situations, and I guess the season favours him in that way, however I feel like it does a pretty good job of including all the characters, like JB and Sacrifice, Nia's characters, Kai, like all of them, they all were great in this season. The side characters and the Keepers were really nice additions too, to the Ninjago universe, as I've already expressed. The Keepers are re really nice quote unquote villains, in a way, but then allies after. I would love to see them return again, as I genuinely think they are nice characters. Chief Mamadis is such a cool character, and... Their connection to the first Minjitsu Master is very interesting and makes them stand out against all the other Ninjago, I guess, clans or characters. And yeah, I would really like to see them again. I don't know what story they could be in, maybe they will help the ninja or something, but I don't know. 
Oh, but that reminds me of the actual villains of the season, that being the Crinwells of Ninjago, run by Ronan. I think this was interesting, but a wasted premise, as I stated in my final review. Ronan as a villain could really work as a full in a full season focused on him. The Shadow of Ronan game did him really well as a villain, and I'd love to see him take the spotlight again, but I felt like this was more of a cameo than a grand stage villain. The animal aspect I did kind of like as well. It's just the fake Wajira when we were expecting the real Wajira to show up, and we all know it's going to be fake from the very first appearance of it in the trailers, but I don't know, it's kind of disappointing. But still, I really do like the fake premise of it. It's quite a, an interesting trope to go with, and yeah, in retrospective, I do kind of like it. Take away the expectations of Wajira. I would have expected the Keepers to be a little bit more smarter than that, but hey, the story's got to work somehow, right? And finally, what we saw of the island I did enjoy, like the wildlife such as Zippy. Zippy was a really nice um, thing, and it's making me want to buy the set actually. And the glimpses of the world as well looked really nice, I just wish it was explored more. I would like to think of this whole video as constructive criticism, and I may have made it look like I don't like this season or episodes. It's just not true, as I really did enjoy it, and I was honestly loving it as I watched it. I just had a lot of criticism which I wanted to express. And like I said in my final review, it's not the worst Ninjago thing I've ever seen, but it's definitely not the best. But I think it really does work as a very nice small Ninjago adventure, which sets us up for quite a big adventure in the next season, which we will hopefully see. But as for the island, yeah, I definitely think it was good. But it's one of those things I don't think I'll be rushing back to watch anytime soon. And if you're interested in seeing where I rank this among the other seasons, I think I'd rank it lower than most seasons, but it's definitely up there among those lower seasons. So I don't know, maybe around the centre mark. But I'll make a full video discussing my rankings of the seasons after season 15 releases, as I feel like there'll be a big, there'll be a bigger gap between season 15 and season 16 than there is between season 14 and season 15. Hello everybody and welcome back to the JBook 2, and finally ranking the episodes from season 14 of Ninjago, aka the island. Now this ranking is probably the most interesting one out of all of Ninjago, as it's only a four episode long season as opposed to 16 to 30 episodes long, like all the other seasons, which we've been getting in the past two years. And of course the 10 episode long format beforehand. I went into detail in my Final Thoughts video the other day, well I say the other day, it was a month ago now like I said, which you can check out the video on the channel of course, but I mentioned I felt one of my main problems with the season was the runtime. Four episode length could have worked if it had longer runtime per episode, instead of 11 minutes to wrap it all up, which led to me not enjoying the later episodes in the season as much as the ones they kicked off this season. But that's not saying I didn't enjoy the season as a whole, because of course I did. I really enjoyed the first two episodes, because it was nice to be back in the world of Ninjago again. However, it felt like filler as we set up for season 15. Not bad filler, good filler, but filler nonetheless. With all that out of the way, let's get into the ranking. So you may remember these rankings from the end of my reviews, and I said I was going to do a full video discussing my rankings at the end. If some of my rankings changed, it would be in this video. If you have watched those episodes, you'll know what my rankings is, but in this video I'm going to go into more depth of why they're ranked there. Starting with my number 4 spot, The Tooth of Wajira. The final episode of the season was by far the weakest. The episode had too much story to wrap up from the season, and it felt overstuffed and rushed. The episode made up excuses for the plot to move forward, and it felt contrived and out of character sometimes, for the sake of plot. The Keepers just accept the ninja after they wash ashore and show the piece of wood, which looks like a tooth, when previously they didn't trust any of the ninja's actions. For all they knew, Rajira was real and the ninja were just telling a lie. Also, can we talk about the ending? Yeah, probably one of the most controversial parts of the season. Rajira being fake and it turning out to be Ronin was an interesting twist, if he previously assumed that Rajira would have had a big role in the season. And it's nice to see a legacy character back. However, it was handled in the worst possible way. It felt it was left to the very last second and lasted no less than two minutes. Ronan's motive, while true to the character, somehow felt out of character. I don't know, I felt Ronan would have more complexity to him than this. And his involvement, while nice, felt unneeded and wasted. However, some parts were great, like the attempt of rescuing Jay was a great scene. This episode had the most problems out of all the episodes in the season. So I guess it's only up from here. In my number 3 spot is episode 3, The Gift of Jay. The Gift of Jay was probably the most forgettable episode in the season. I struggled to remember what even happened in the episode, and was the only one I had to re-watch for this video, when I realised, nothing actually happened. The plot is pretty much the ninja getting caught twice and setting up Jay's sacrifice in the next episode. This episode didn't need to happen. Lloyd and Twitchy could have got captured with the others, and nothing about the season would have changed. They would still be strung up at the beach at the end. The Jay scenes were good, but could have easily been in another episode, and nothing would change. The jungle run scene, as I call it, with Lloyd travelling through the jungle was fun, but short. 
It showed off animation which looked great. And while it was fun to watch it at points, it was just a bit boring watching the ninja being captured, saved and then captured again. In my number 2 spot is episode 1, Uncharted. This was a solid opening to the season. It sets up the season's premise, but that's all it really felt like it was doing. The setup. But it was fun. It was cool seeing the ninja outside of what's going on in the season. As we usually do get at the start of the season. Which is probably one of my favourite parts because, I don't know, I like seeing the ninja outside of what's happening in the main story. And the journey to the island was fun, with the catamaran sequence and the arrival finding the help sign in the sand. My favourite part of the episode was Twitchy Tim's introduction. I loved that scene, and I love Twitchy as a character. Probably one of my favourite parts of the season. I hope he returns, as he was wasted in the season finale. So yeah, a really good episode, but not as good as... My number one spot, which is episode two, The Keepers of the Amulet. The Keepers of the Amulet is my favourite episode from the season because it, because it gave me what I wanted and what was sold with the season. The ninja on an adventure through the jungle in search of Misako and Master Wu. Oh yeah, and clutch powers. That's the objective, however they are interrupted by the good additions of the season being Zippy and the Stone Golems. He was a really fun character but misused later on in the season which is why I don't like the other two episodes as much. But Zippy was a fun character, was cute and I don't know, like the energy. And then the stone golems, aka the totem poles, were probably my absolute favourite part of the season, which makes it so heartbreaking when they were never used again after this episode. But them as a threat in this episode was amazing and made the episode for me. And I guess in some ways made the season. I liked their elemental warping powers and then they just seemed like more of a threat and I expected them to come back. But maybe, maybe they will, but I doubt they ever will. But yeah, it was just a really nice episode. It was literally the episode which gave me what I wanted, like I said. It was just an adventure through the jungle which is mainly what I came to the season 4, and also Jay's Sacrifice, but that was handled in the other two episodes. Yeah, that's why it's my number one episode of the season. So I guess overall, the season, while a bit underwhelming in some ways, was also just a nice little filler season, I guess. I'm not going to treat it like anything massive, because it wasn't trying to be. It was just trying to be a fun adventure for the ninja. And I guess it is a kind of a setup for season 15, which is to its own detriment, but I guess it's a nice story to tell. Maybe it will make season 15 feel more complete and probably feel like one of the best seasons, but we will find out when season 15 is complete. And that is the end of the mega review for The Island. Tell me what you thought, did you enjoy it? I most certainly did. And if you lasted this long in the video, write, uh, write Chief Momadas. If no, actually that might be too hard to spell. Write, um, write Ronin. Put Ronin in the comments down below and I will know that you lasted the entire video. Either that or you skipped to the end, but I don't know why you do that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why not like and subscribe and share fellow Ninjago community members. Also, you can join my Discord where we can discuss Ninjago forever and you can also get updates on the, what's happening with the channel. Also, you can leave suggestions for future video ideas like this one. You can also follow my social medias. I don't really use them as much as I intend to do, but it's still worth the follow. But thank you so much for watching this video and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye!